Hey guys, so a few viewers want to know why don't we accept credit card payments for our homes during this half price home promo. Let's talk about that when I return on the Eric McNeil Be Free Show. Black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Hey guys, welcome. You've just discovered the Eric McNeil Be Free Show, where it's all about being financially independent, responsible for self, enjoying life and empowering others free. So you see behind me, I have a sofa. Um, this is uh, the, some of the furniture for the model home. But the model home is not ready yet, so we had to divert and bring it here. And um, you have to get these made, so we had to go ahead and put our order in to get it made. We didn't know how long it was going to take. Uh, I got this, uh, this is a, a sofa three-seater, and I got some more back here. Um, and we got these from Latex Phone. And, um, yeah, so you can see in here, I got some more. These are uh, like a uh, sofa chair and another sofa chair, and that's a... Uh, Another sofa, two-seater, like a love seat, I guess they call it. But now, in your model home, you know, in the, in the uh, well, actually, not in the model, but in the homes that we're selling, you won't have this, this much furniture with the, uh, in the living room. Um, the reason we got, like, all of this is because they offered a discount if you purchased the package. So we, we went on ahead and got the package because we have two uh, sides of the model home that we're building that we have to furnish. So... Um, but typically, in the homes that we're selling, you'll have like, you know, um, the love seat, then you'll have uh, an accent chair or a sofa chair, and then you'll have a coffee table, and that will be your, um, your living room set. And you can upgrade to other things, you know, like maybe you say, okay, um, I want to upgrade to the, the three uh, cedar, you know, instead of the two cedar, or something like that. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, it's it's still wrapped up for the most part. You can kind of see the color. It's kind of a, it's kind of a a, a brownish color. Um, but yeah, it's still wrapped up. Yeah, but yeah. So they brought this, and as soon as it is ready to move, we will be moving it over to the model home. Okay. So uh, yeah, I just thought that. It was something to show you this morning. But at any rate, let's talk about accepting credit cards for home payments, guys. All right, so, um, yeah, so that's what people want to know. Eric, you got this uh, half-price home promo going on, and somebody just, you know, $20,000 they can spend. Well, here's what I tell you. Um, what you can do is you can go get a cash advance. <laughs> And there's my chicken, you know, it's not my chicken, it's the workers' chickens, but, you know, they like to keep me company here next door. Um, but at any rate, so what you can do is you get a cash advance and um, you get the cash and then, you know, now typically, you know, the cash advance is much less than what they will allow you to charge. Um, yeah, so I don't know if he's going to let me. Shoo, 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 shoo. Making all that noise. But at any rate, yeah, yep, yeah, you can get a cash advance and then take your cash and you can buy a house. Now, um, I want you to watch this video. This is about a seven minute clip and this is a, a uh, just a short uh, lesson that I made for an online class. That, that, and, uh, and it talks about, uh, you know, the, my, one of my experiences with credit card processors. Uh, when I started my online company and I want you to hear my experience and I'm gonna come back and we're gonna talk more about it after you know you listen to the uh, the you know the recording all right okay guys this lesson is really just going to be a story of my experience with payment processing companies so it's a learn from my mistake lesson and my goal is to get you to see just how serious it is to choose a suitable payment processing company for your business. 
So in 2009, my girlfriend and I started an online company called Platinum Wigs, specializing in the retail sale of hair wigs, as you all know. And our sales were rapidly increasing beyond our wildest imagination. We were using a payment processor at the time called iPayment to process our credit card payments. And the company has since, I believe, merged with another company, so iPayment is no longer in business as iPayment. But after about a year of using iPayment, they began withholding our revenue and even withdrawing funds from our bank account. And the bank could not stop them. They said that the company had a right to do so and it was within their contract. So I had to close the bank account and open a new one. They eventually withheld $12,000. And an attorney suggested that I contact the Attorney General's Office of Tennessee and California, since that is where their main offices were located. They canceled our account and ended up holding our funds for six months. And no attorney or Attorney General Office could change that. Had I not been well established financially, it would have been a very bad situation indeed. So, after we get beyond this, the six months go by of us haggling with this company and we finally get our money back. We then signed up with an ISO. And the sales person assured me that we would not experience a similar situation because their credit cards were being processed by the largest processor in the nation, which was First Data. Now, mind you, during this six-month haggling with uh, iPayments after they canceled our accounts, we were using PayPal in the interim, and they were processing our credit cards. But, of course, they're not a merchant account, so our rates were higher but we didn't have the problem. So after the six months passed by, we said, okay, we can finally get another merchant account number. And we so we used First Data. Based on the guarantee from this salesperson that the same thing could not happen with First Data. So I was very relieved. But about 30 days after signing the contract with First Data, the company closed our account and withheld about $27,000 of our receipts. After contacting an attorney, he informed me that this company, First Data, drove an airline to bankruptcy. So there was little that I could do to fight them. He simply hoped that I had enough money to weather the storm. And First Data end up holding our funds for six months, just like iPayments did. So after these two experiences, I began to research the market so that I could really understand this whole credit card processing market. And I didn't realize just how murky it truly was. I discovered that iPayments actually used First Data to process their credit cards. And I saw that there was only about 10 companies processing virtually all the credit cards. And because the industry was not regulated, they could essentially do as they pleased to customers. After our first two experiences with credit card processing, we then approached PayPal and explained to them our business. 
They offered to do our credit card processing at a lower rate without the hassle. However, they did require a rolling reserve, which meant that they would be taking a percentage of each sale and keeping it for six months. The amount that they took for the rolling reserve was about 20%. But this amount varies from company to company. Now, while PayPal allowed us to continue operating uninterrupted, there are some horror stories with companies in PayPal as well. So don't get too comfortable with any of these companies. This is why I always suggest having multiple credit card processors just in case. You need a backup and a backup to the backup. This seemingly small task is so critical to the success of your startup. And it's only because I had enough money to weather that storm that we remained operational. So most startups would not have been so lucky after having $27,000 of their receipts withheld from them within a few days. So please, don't be lured to sleep by some fast-talking salesperson who promises you uh, that this could never happen with their company. Do your due diligence in obtaining a payment processor and again, have a backup plan readily available. Okay, hopefully you don't experience this. Now, let's move on to the next lesson. Okay, guys, so you have had the opportunity to hear the recording and um, hear me talk about an experience I had with a couple of uh, credit card processing companies. And you can see that you can have a nightmare. And uh, the tactic that they use to take my money and hold them for six months, they use the same thing on an airline to drive the airline into bankruptcy. So you can see how serious this thing can get. Now, when somebody charges something with a credit card and the credit card company transfers those funds to you, what they are actually doing is giving you a loan, right? They're giving you a loan, so the terms of that loan is basically they control those terms. And if they want to keep uh, your monies for up to six months, they can if they want to go into your bank account and withdraw funds, usually, they can. So, um, when you start saying, I'm going to accept some very large payments through credit card, you better be very careful with that. Uh, because at any moment, now, first of all, they'll usually tell you there's a limit. They'll tell you, don't go over this amount in a day or don't go over this amount in a month. And if you start going over that amount, then out of nowhere, they can lock those funds. And um, even with our, uh, one of the reasons we can't even do it if we wanted to, to be honest with you, because our credit card processor um, is Ghanaian based and then you have these foreign cards. They will only allow you to do like maybe up to a thousand U.S. dollars per transaction, so per person. So even if we wanted to over here, we couldn't do it, you know, you know, because they wouldn't process it. Now, we uh, started our half price home promo, you know, uh, maybe by the time you see this, uh, you know, well, you might see it today. So it would be like a day, day old. But we started and we had a couple people who were able to process their credit cards. And, and after those two people, uh, the credit card processor started declining the transactions and um, I had to basically discontinue the uh, credit card processor and just allow people to reserve their properties or their homes without paying that $500 fee uh, because the credit card uh, processor started acting up and I can see even still for the two people that process their credit cards you know what, they, they haven't even released the funds. You see that? You see that? 
and they'll probably try to keep those funds. So what I might have to do is tell those people that I'm going to refund. Like I'm going to refund. I I might tell, I'm going to refund those funds, and you know you just pay it with the wire transfer. This is why, guys, the credit card business is a very very murky business. If you study it and you research it, and and I have, I know it thoroughly. So when I say that no. That is not a good idea for you to be accepting, you know, they want to accept some home payment with credit cards. I know absolutely what I'm talking about from experience, from experience, and you know, and research. So, guys, I know. Now, um, but anyway, that's what you have with this business. Like, hey, there's little to no regulation of these guys, and man, they take your money, they, they, they do what they want to. Can you imagine six months? I can't wait six months. When, when, when you send that money, those monies here, I have to absolutely have a plan for that money when it hits that bank. Because if not, we're not going to be able to fulfill our commitment. So we have to absolutely know what we're doing. And when uh, somebody, you know, these credit card companies say we're going to hold your monies for six months, we wouldn't be able to fulfill our commitments. We would be out of business. We would be out of business. Like, you know, the money, once it moves, it, you have to, it has to do something, right? It can't sit, especially in this economy where we have uh, hyperinflation starting to happen and the money lose value so quickly, right? And if, if, if a credit card company, you put twenty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in their hands and they, the, the credit card processing company and they got you for six months, do you know how much value that money loses? Um, I couldn't give you, I couldn't sell you a house at half price and then uh, deliver it uh, with them holding funds for some three, four, five, six months. It wouldn't happen. So, yeah. So, no, no, we won't be doing that. But at any rate, I uh, just thought I would share that with you. Like what we're talking about, go ahead. Hit that subscribe button. Like, share, comment. Let me know what you're thinking. And um, if you haven't already done so, Please, please, please go to our website, www.migratingculturecrossing.com and check out our half price home sale, guys. You get the house for half price if you're willing to pay the full amount up front and you're willing to wait three years. It's very simple, very simple. And, um, you know, you can find me on Facebook also at Facebook.com forward slash Eric McNeil is free. And as always, hoorah, ahuru. Now be free.